Hello everybody, this is the final lecture. It's one to say congratulations, you've completed the beginning part of the course and well done for following through all the videos and if you have done, thank you for sharing your work as you've gone. Now I do want to show you a few extra steps just to really hone your skills, what you've learned so far. So let me share my screen once again and we can have a look and you've probably seen this file before, it's been in the background of all of the introductions. In front of us here we have some simple-ish objects and I would challenge you now to go off and create a couple more objects just using primitives. It's amazing what those constraints can actually mean you end up creating. So for instance this bridge and this walkway here, let's break down how it's put together. Look, we can see here it is all one object so I've joined it together in the end but if we break it up into its individual components we can see here that we've got cubes that are stretched out we've got cylinders we have more cylinders what else a few more cubes that have stretched out and I've left a slight gap in between these planks and if you look really carefully you'll see that these planks aren't straight so I've used the randomized transform on there to give it a kind of undulating surface this adds to the realism of objects by doing little things like that. Let's have a look at our mechanical walker here with a gun underneath. I think I might have spent a little too much time on the weapon itself. These are just cylinders stacked on top of one another. In fact, this object is mainly, by the looks of it, cylinders, <laughs> which is pretty impressive. The level of detail that you can actually get by just shoving geometry inside itself. Now, I've mentioned this before that this perhaps isn't the best way of going around modeling, but you know what? That's a pretty convincing mech shape and it didn't take me that long to do. I would say it probably took me half the time it would do to make it normally. When I say normally, I mean going into edit mode and altering vertices, edges and faces manually. So I really enjoyed how that turned out and the detailing that I could put on there. The laptop is one of my favourite ones. Let's focus on that because I had to be very precise with the individual keys. These are literally squashed down cubes put very carefully next to one another. And that's all that is. And it comes out really well. If I switch over into rendered mode, and by the looks of things, we don't have a light in our scene. There we go. I've added a simple sun lamp. We've got ourselves a quite good looking laptop. And of course, if we added some extra materials on there, we could really bring it together. We've got this cathedral or church in the background. I love putting these objects all together and building the blocks. You can see this is just done with cubes. These are intersecting cubes, so they're right on top of one another. And I've just moved them slightly so we don't have that Z fighting going on. And of course the planet in the background is a very easy thing to make. We've already done a simple planet, but then I added some extra spheres around our world as well. Okay, so there's just a few ideas. If you've got some other suggestions yourself, I'd love to see what you've come up with and also let us know your suggestions and if you would like I'd love to include your models in this video itself so I can add more and more examples of what you guys are up to inspiration for everyone else so that's it for this lecture and in fact this section so once again well done for completing this section and I'll see you all again soon take care